Greetings, fellow captains. I am your host, Brent Justice. Welcome to my gaming channel, Justice Gaming. Today I have Star Trek Online news. This is for the game Star Trek Online. This is coming from the main Star Trek Online webpage. And we finally have some news to talk about because there is finally some new content coming. And I can finally make some new videos because there's new content. So here we go. This is straight from the web page. As you can see, I'm scrolling through. Here are the content articles that are currently up. I'm going to go through the most recent things that are relevant. We'll start right here with Assault Terok Nor in Forged in Fire. Let me zoom in a little for you. You're all worthless and weak, says Admiral Lita of the Terran Empire. As part of our story involving the Terran Empire, we've revisited some older Mirror Universe content and brought you a few new ways to feel the wrath of the Empire. In an update and reimagining of the TFO Assault on Terragnor, we've built a new experience that re-images the attack on the Mirror Space Station, battle on the updated ground map from DS9 in an assault that takes you through the cargo bay, across the promenade, and into ore processing. You'll face down Terran foes while protecting infiltrators to take over Terranor security systems, fighting off the station's toughest defenders, and finally confronting Leda with all of the powers of the Paw Wraiths at her command. We've smoothed out the mission goals to make it more straightforward, added UI elements to help you keep track of your progress. The final confrontation with Leda should be more memorable. Hijack the technology of the station to temporarily strip her of her connection to the Paw Wraiths so that she, you can fight her but be ready for her to explode in a blaze of fury when her powers come back. You'll race from level to level as you try to rescue captured coalition operatives and follow the directions of resistance fighter Ray Yeet while dodging the flames of the coast of Ocean. We'll see you there soon. Try not to get burned. So this sounds like they're totally reimagining Assault on Terak Nor, the ground TFO, which I have played quite a bit and I actually enjoy. However, that very end part with uh, Lita, who is taken over with uh, Paw Wraith, um, is difficult because some people don't quite understand that you have to kite her over to one of those platforms, and then you have to uh, set it off so that you electrocute her to uh, damage her. You cannot do any damage until you do that, um, but it's all a matter of kiting her onto those, so you kind of have to pull her onto those in a way by, like, doing damage to her and bringing her towards you. Someone with a high threat generation, for example, uh, could get her to follow them, to bring them onto those pads. So maybe this will be a little easier now. Maybe this will be a little more understandable and um, more people can hold on to whatever changes they're going to make here. Maybe make that gameplay a little more fun. So I'm looking forward to the new um, Forged in Fire, Assault on Terak Nor. I guess, is that what it's going to be called? We'll find out. Looking forward to playing it, however it's going to end up. So this is this update that is coming. I guess we could call this a season update, a special event. Uh, they call it a content release. So I guess it's similar to what a season update used to be. Um, it's called Enter the Heart of the Storm. And as we can see, uh, Mirror uh, Kumarake is in the mix. As part of our upcoming content release, which will be from May 10th until June 9th, and later this year for consoles, a special event looms, Heart of the Storm. This new event will give an opportunity to drive back the Terrans and claim an epic reward, the Kumarake Visionary Ground Set. Participating in the event grants daily progress towards the grand prize, the four-piece Kumaraki Visionary Ground Set. Obtaining the Kumaraki Visionary Ground Set requires 20 daily progress, and captains can earn daily progress once per account per day by playing either the new episode or Task Force Operation release this season or any of the other episodes of or Task Force Operations in the event. In total, four available missions and four t TFOs reward daily progress, and they are as follows. You can play the Firewall one, or the episode Redshift, and there apparently is going to be a new episode or a mission, call them missions, episodes, whatever. Uh, there's going to be a new one called Blue Shift, and a new one called The Calling. 
So it looks like two new missions will be coming for us to play. So that will be part of this event as well, but also two new missions, which will have their own unique rewards. So I will be doing uh, Let's Play videos on these new missions. So uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, and you'll get an update when I have new videos out on these two new missions. Other TFOs, you can play Wolf, you can or Operation Wolf, you can play Peter Aratus, you can do the new Forged in Fire, which I'm guessing is the new revamped Assault on Terak Nor. Is that going to replace Assault on Terak Nor? I think maybe so. So we'll have to play Forged in Fire. That'll be new gameplay. So a new TFO to play there. I will also do a Let's Play video on that. And then you can also play Counterpoint. <laughs> Once captains have obtained 20 daily progress on their account, they can claim the Kumaraki Visionary Ground Set. After that, the event will still be playable, and you get extra dilithium, blah, blah, blah. We know how that goes. Captains will also have the option to purchase their remaining progress in the Zen store, or with Zen. So there's what the outfit looks like. I like the looks of it. It's uh, basically an evil Kumaraki mirror universe uh, looking um, uh, outfit, what she wears. Little is known about the Kumaraki of the mirror universe. Her technology is once impressive and distressing, soft-spoken and megalomaniacal. The lightning weapon is capable of significant electrical damage and it restores the user's shields and deals bonus damage when used on low health foes. Even more potential is stored in its tertiary attack, a shock wave which convert, converts the user's shields into electric damage for and dramatic bonus to kit performance for the user's next kit module or Symphony of Lightning, see below. The armor contains an array of backup capacitors able to restore full power to the personal shield generator at a moment's notice. The PSG itself, when its shields are in full combat, automatically deploys a drone to provide an invulnerability field around the user for a brief period of time. Lastly, the set obtains a kit module which deploys the same drone in a more aggressive role, dealing electrical damage over time to nearby foes with bonus damage for enemies with high remaining health. The machinations only become more dire when combined. Two-piece is the electromagnetic force majeure. Improves kit performance, improves maximum health based on a percentage of maximum shield capacity. When shields are at full combat, drains 25% of current shield capacity to provide a larger boost to kit performance. Three-piece is called Symphony of Lightning. Makes up to eight foes in a cone in front of the user, then strikes, or marks up to them, then strikes a random marked foe with lightning several times, plus an additional number of times based on kit performance. Foes struck repeatedly take slightly reduced damage per bolt. And then you have the four-piece bonus, which is power overwhelming. Further improves kit performance, improves electromagnetic force majeure's bonus to health, improves electromagnetic force majeure's bonus to kit performance, improves shield recovery by using the weapon on low health targets. This item also unlocks you new, unique Mirror Lucari costume pieces for you to use with your character. This is a special event for our next content to drop, and it, and it is not part of the event campaign. We hope you enjoy this special event. Captains, I will see you in the game. So I'm looking forward to that ground set. Uh, something to grind for. I don't think that I will end up using this ground set like on a character permanently. Um, but I will get it just to have it. You know. Maybe I can show it off in a video. Another new piece of news. Class of 2409, report for duty. We have undertaken a rework of the Starfleet tutorial experience for cadets undertaking their first cruise. Newly created 2409 Starfleet officers were experienced polished and updated training exercises. As our updated tutorial, your captains to be still start as a graduate. I bothered that. Let's try this again. In our updated tutorial, your captains to be still, your captains to be still start on graduation day at Starfleet Academy, but we've updated the map to improve its visual fidelity and provide a more beautiful landscape. Your companion, Eliza Flores, leads you through the Academy steps so that you always know where to go next. Updated UI elements now include people to talk to, places to go, and objects to interact with. Several characters have also received a visual polish update, so you'll notice that some of your mentors and peers have an improved look. 
In addition, we've tweaked the story of the tutorial to focus on one overriding threat, the Borg. Your humble ship survives a Borg strike and becomes embroiled in the awakening sleeper cell of a Borg on a nearby Federation colony. And when your captain is abducted and assimilated, it's up to you to take the center seat and save the day. Of course, Starfleet is a family, and you'll have a little help, both from Captain Nog and the famous Admiral Janeway, who has plenty of experience in fighting the Borg. All of the cutscenes in the tutorial have been redone to provide a much smoother and more dramatic experience, and we've taken a crack at improving the tutorial's behind-the-scenes logic as well to catch odd edge cases and make sure that you won't get stuck and you should always know where to go next. Once we've made it through, you'll consult with Admiral Janeway once more on Earth Space Dock before receiving your next assignment in from uh, Fleet Admiral Quinn. Of course, Delta recruits still have the special experience too, but they still have to make it past the Borg threat before they can save the future. We'll see you once you've completed your training, Cruise Cadet. So a revamped intro tutorial for the Federation playthrough, the main Federation playthrough. Very interesting that they're doing that. I don't really didn't really see a need to do that, especially since the last round of updates. Uh, but it seems they want to make the Borg a primary thing in this game, especially from the get-go. And um, I guess the idea is your captain gets assimilated and you have to take the captain's seat. So I guess that works. And then uh, you're going to be talking to Janeway now. So I guess that's a big addition because they didn't used to have her in the game. And the actual actress uh, is now, you know, speaking in the game. And so that, I guess, is just another character in the game. And so that's great. Um, I will be playing this new tutorial. So again, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned if you want to see that. Uh, but I will make a video playthrough of the new tutorial. All right, next bit is the Delta Quadrant Recruits is back for a limited time. Uh, they've had this in the past. Uh, they're bringing it back. So if you never got a chance to make a Delta Recruit, here's another chance. Uh, but in addition, they have made some updates to it to make it more current. Um, the special Delta Recruit event is now coming back from May 10th to June 9th. So that's the same period as that other Kumaraka event. You can create a new Delta Recruit character. Any newly made 2409 Starfleet character, Klingon Defense Force, or Romulan is eligible to become a recruit for the 28 days this event runs. Delta Recruits gain a set of special goals in order to prepare for the Iconian War. Using a Tesseract receiver from the future, you'll chase down information about the Iconians and complete other tasks to make sure your faction's ready to handle the Iconians. Along the way, you'll earn great rewards and gain special account unlocks so that other characters are rewarded too. In addition, we've updated the Delta Recruit tasks to remove out-of-date missions and introduce new goals with new rewards. Missions that are no longer in the episode journal will no longer have Delta Recruit tasks in them, but we've added new tasks to the new Romulus Dyson Sphere and Delta Quadrant story arcs. You'll also gain rewards from completing those mission groups. Tasks that previously gave you marks have been updated so that you can claim all of the new kinds of reputation marks that have been added since the first launch of Delta Recruitment. There's now a reward for reaching level 60, which gives you even more marks and reputation dilithium as well as salvage so that you can earn more reputation gear and re-engineer your equipment for the end game. We've added new rewards for completing your faction's admiralty campaign, including a very special admir admiralty card to the USS Voyager. Existing Delta recruits will be able to complete these new goals as well, and if you've already finished them, you can claim the rewards immediately. Remember, to become a Delta recruit and gain access to the rewards, you must make a new 2409 Starfleet character, a Klingon Defense Force character, or Romulan Republic character during the event. Then you must either play the tutorial until you receive the special Delta Recruit Tesseract Transceiver device. Once you receive the device, your character is a Delta Recruit, and you can complete the goals anytime and claim the rewards even after the event ends. So this is just another uh, chance to become or create a Delta Recruit character in the game. Uh, and I already have one. I'm not going to create another one. I don't need more characters at this point. Uh, but what I can do is I can go back and see what some of the new things they've added are uh, into the rewards for my character and then see if I can go do them. I don't know if it's going to be worth recording videos for. Probably not. 
Um, but I'll go back and look on my current Delta recruit character. What new stuff is there? It's probably not that major though. Um, but yeah, so, uh, just know that that's there and you can do that. I have, I think I have already recorded videos of a Delta recruit character the first time this came around. So you can search on my YouTube channel, uh, for a Delta recruit. And I bet you I've got videos there, uh, doing this the first time. So that's already been done. Uh, but anyway, that's, uh, yeah, coming back now. So that gives people a little something extra to do if you never got the chance before. So right now, that's what we have going on in Star Trek Online. Um, the Delta Quadrant stuff, uh, tutorial revamp. There is a couple of other things. They're not huge, uh, but the uh, California is in going to be coming to the game. Uh, Miracle Worker Utility Class Starship. I'm guessing this is from that anime, animated show, which I have never seen. What is it, Lower Decks? Because they keep talking about that. I've never seen it, so I'm not familiar with this. But if that's something that you might be familiar with, it is something that's coming to the game. Um, it is coming with the release of the next story content, the Infinity Lockbox is I guess where you'll find it. It's a featured lockbox. And there's other things in it as well. The tier six starship. Um, yeah, and other things as well. The unstable planetoid detonation console, something from the Cerritos. The ground weapon mandatory medical treatment rifle, scorpion cube. Strange energies infusion channels mysterious alien powers for a brief time. Left foes. These things I'm not familiar with, but they're coming to the game. Lower decks personal traits. Space trait called Make It Go. A space trait called Vertruvian Explosive. Vertruvian. Ground trait called Consulting the Team. And a ground trait called Shadow of the Black Mountain. I don't know what any of this stuff is. Um, but I guess this is just extra stuff coming to the game. And if you're interested in it, you can check it out. California Miracle Worker Utility Cruiser. Here's the, the details on it. Tier 6 ship. It, it is a uh, Miracle Worker ship. Um, five engineering, engineering based ship. So there you go. I'm not really too interested in it. But if you are, there you go. Console Universal Terraforming Emulsion. Starship Trait Lower Decks Initiative. So yeah, if you're interested in all this information, it's on the main StarTrek.com webpage. And you can check it out all out there. I'm not too interested in it myself, but just wanted to mention it in case you are. It is going to be there. There's some new items in MUD's market. Not even going to talk about that too much. That's controversial, <laughs> that whole marketplace anyway. Vanity shields, more vanity shields can be bought. Um, I think they're making some changes to the Phoenix price pack. It says here to, to somehow help the dilithium economy. With upcoming re return of the Phoenix price pack, we're excited to reveal a number of changes. New prizes are coming. You can read about all this. As you can see, there's quite a bit here, and I really don't want to read through all this right now. I don't really play the markets and the dilithium markets and get into all that stuff. But if you're interested in that and how these Phoenix price packs work and things, it says here there's increased odds, priced uh, odds, odds, uh, priced here, consolidations and stuff out with the old, a paradigm change. I don't know. I'm not too into this kind of stuff because I don't really play the gambling game in the game. <laughs> I just like to play the game. So, but it's all on StarTrek.com if you want to read it yourself and you're interested in it. Um, what else do we have? I'm more interested in the content like missions and TFOs and ships and stuff like that. Uh, that's pretty much it. Everything else is older news. Uh, all this stuff is older and has come and gone already. So that's what's coming. There's some cool stuff to play through. Uh, and I will make as many videos as I can. Uh, new missions, new TFOs. Definitely be playing those. I'll be playing the tutorial. I'll look at the Delta Recruits, see what's new there. 
And uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. And the Kumaraki event, grind for that. That's it. That's what's coming up. Um, as more news is released that is pertinent or, or um, interesting or relevant, I'll make more videos about it. But until then, that is what to expect. All starting on the 10th, May 10th. So look toward the game that day for new stuff to do if you have been wanting to do some new stuff in Star Trek Online. So there you go, everybody. I hope you enjoy this. If you uh, like this video, consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more content. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.